This is not an image of a brain. It is something completely different. It's a very ephemeral object. It lasts only for a fraction of a second. This is made of alcohol. Let me quickly demonstrate this over here, how I took this picture. Okay, so what I have here is an empty bottle, some alcohol, some oxygen, and some matchsticks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of that alcohol into the bottle. And now add some oxygen to it. Seal it. And then set it on fire. Can we, can we maybe uh, kill the lights a little bit? Dim them a little bit? Just in order to make it more visible. Let's see if this works. Now that was very quiet and, and maybe some of the back rows didn't really see it, so let me show you a small video that I did back home at my studio. What happens is that when you spray the alcohol into the bottle, since it's a very volatile substance, it start, the molecule starts spreading inside the bottle. And as soon as you set it on fire, your flame travels through the bottle and on its way down burning the alcohol and the oxygen. And that, that gives these interesting looking structures to kind of reminds us of brains. Now, you might ask yourself, what does this guy do for a living? <laughs> um, I have a studio back home in Switzerland. I do commercial photography and also art photography. That studio is based in a very small town in Switzerland. It's called Arau. I'm sure none of you have heard of Arau, but I'm sure you know one person that went to school there. Einstein, he went to school in Aarau and later on became world famous for his theories. And he once said something very smart about his education, about his qualifications. He said, I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious. And that's also my engine for my creativity. And I think being curious is at the root of discovering something new, creating something new. What I do is I try to look at scientific phenomena and I try to interpret them in an artistic way. For example, whether it's sound that creates crystals, makes crystals to ch jump up and down, forms them into this fantastic looking structure, whether it's a $10 illusion of vast stellar structures or ferrofluid, a very strange magnetic liquid that forms pop-art-like structures. I'm always trying to bring those two worlds, art and science, together. Let me now demonstrate this a little bit in depth uh, based on one project that I recently completed. It has to do with modeling paint by different natural, natural forces. Now, once again, you might wonder, how do, where's the inspiration to that? How do you come up with such an idea? Well, I looked at the painting of Jackson Pollock. I'm sure you know Jackson Pollock. He was a famous American painter, and he was very well known for his distinctive uh, style of painting, which was called action painting. You can see him here at work. So what he did is he uh, took a canvas, put it on the floor, and then he would use the paintbrush to throw paint directly onto the canvas. He sometimes would even pour the paint directly onto the canvas. And it's a funny thing that he did not sign his artwork. He used his hands and printed on, on the finished canvas. And it was when I looked at this image of seeing him at work, I thought, I'm not so much interested in the finished piece. I'm much more interested in right this moment. What happens when the paint starts to flow in the air? And that's what got me inspired to make a series that is based on modeling paint by different natural forces. So I did a lot of experimenting. As you can see, that's my studio floor. And 
Uh, my landlord wasn't too pleased about this, uh, those experiments. But in the end, I came up with uh, a couple of different ideas how, how to do it. In the first series, I used centrifugal force to create images. Now, centrifugal force, that's what we experience when we're driving our car and we're going on a curve. If we have something on the dashboard, it's pulled outwards. And that's what uh, centrifugal means. It means fleeing the center. So what I did is I took uh, an electric drill and I added a rod in front of it. And then uh, on that rod, I placed different shades of paint. You can see a little making of video in the back. Here you can see me adding the paint onto this uh, rod. That's uh, a special mix of acrylic paint um, to make it look more nicely. And then of course, you have to turn that drill on. And as you can see, this happens in a blink of an eye and the paint is gone. But if you use high-speed cameras, you're able to just capture that moment where the paint starts to leave the disc. And you have these fantastic structures appearing and they all look differently depending on uh, the exact moment where you photograph it. Now you might ask yourself, how, do you, how are you able to capture that very moment where the paint starts to leave the rod? You do this by using a microphone and connecting it to the camera and the flashes. So every time you turn the drill on, a signal is sent to the flashes and the camera so that those two devices know exactly when to uh, pull the trigger. So this is the first series. Now, th on the second series, I used pneumatic force. This is a, a balloon, a modeling balloon, covered with acrylic paint. This is the same image half a second later. So I pierced the balloon, and this, of course, made the paint to move away from the balloon. And what I find so fascinating about photography is that it enables you to capture a moment and hold it on to it forever. For example, if you look at these structures, they're there for only a mere fraction of a second, but you can hold on to it by photography and look closely at what's happening in that fraction. For example, in this image, if you uh, look at the, the upper right corner, you can see how the different shades of paint already start to mix into each other. And this happens so quickly that you would never be able to see this with your naked eye. And that's the advantage of photography. Only photography can uh, enable you to do this. Let me now turn to one last project, which looks like, looks like this. Here again, also for this project, I used uh, alcohol. And uh, it's not that, that I'm so, well, I have to, ex I have to maybe explain, explain how you get the inspiration for, for this project. Why alcohol again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be judged in a, in a bad way about this. <laughs> the reason why is when you start working on a project, you start thinking of a lot of ideas. What could I do? What could be uh, done with this material? And when I was working on, on this project, I mixed alcohol with all kinds of different um, materials. And this made me think of this next project. So this is how you uh, get inspired. Sometimes it's by an image, it's by a thing that you read, it's something that you come across, or it might be also when you're working on something else and you find new ways how to use that initial idea on other projects. So for this project, I did not set the alcohol on fire this time, but I, I added into a, a glass. And the images look like this. Let me show you how this is done. So we got the alcohol in here, and now we add um, oil paint to it. And as you can see, the oil paint sinks right to the bottom of it. 
and they all, those two liquids, they also, they don't mix with each other. This has to do with the different polarity of these um, liquids. You experience that as well when you mixing a salad sauce and you try to put vinegar and oil together, those two liquids, they do, don't mix. And right here, we have the same effect. Now in this video that I just showed you before, you could see the, oil, the drops of oil paint floating through the alcohol. So that's a little different here. Right here, it's at the bottom of the bottle. So how do you get them, how do you get the oil, oil paint to flow inside um, the alcohol? So I used distilled water. And I added this to, to the alcohol. And what now happens is that the two densities of these two liquids, of the oil paint and the alcohol, become equal. Before, the alcohol was much lighter than the oil paint. That's why it sinks right to the bottom. But if you mix distilled water to the alcohol, those two densities become equal, and thus floating through, um, through the alcohol. So that's, the, that's how the, these images look like. Now I've showed you these couple of projects that I recently completed, and you might wonder, well, what's it good for? Um, that's always a good question when it comes to art. What's it good for? The reason why I'm creating those images is that I see them as, so, uh, as a kind of an inspiration or an invitation for people to look at them and think about all the beauty that is constantly surrounding us. Because when you think about these project, projects, they're not based on very complicated scientific phenomena. We come across them in our daily lives, and yet we don't pay too much attention to them because they're just there. So my aim is with those images to make everybody a little bit more curious and inspire everybody to look at the world around them and all the magic that is constantly around us. And hopefully I was able to do this with those few projects that I just showed you. Thank you.